Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Vogt, joined by Drew Galloway, wearing my uh, my Villanova light blue. Shout out to the to the, the Blue Wildcats for giving K-State a commit on this lovely day. Brennan Housen is officially a member of the K-State basketball team. Nice shooter that K-State adds with two years of eligibility left. So if you haven't checked out our video kind of breaking down the Housen commitment, go over and check it out now, especially since, I mean, there may be stuff in there where we talk about building out the rest of the roster that's obsolete by the time you view it, so you want to get on that as fast as possible. Something that isn't obsolete, we actually have a lot of time until it takes place, is the Big 12 Big East battle. This is going to be the final year of it. This started in the 1920 season. Uh, K-State hosted Marquette in, in that year. And if you go and kind of look at how that worked out, I think people were upset. I was probably one of them that the year prior, K-State had played at Marquette. They were getting the home game with them, and then the conferences were like, nope, that counts as your game. And it's like, ah, give K-State give K-State another one. But didn't work out for K-State there, and they had struggled in the Big 12 Big East battle until they beat Villanova this past season. And this year, they get to go on the road for their final trip. They will be facing St. John's, a pretty exciting matchup for K-State uh, in the final year of this thing because – Two years ago, who really cares about playing St. John's? Now it's Rick Patino, and it's a team that is trying to build their their way back up, and it's going to be a Saturday game. Madison Square Garden will be in play. Uh, all things considered, I think this is about as good as K-State could have hoped for for a matchup in the uh, Big 12 Big East battle. Yeah, I mean, all things considered, like you said, this is probably the best from like a – an outlook and just looking at like the the appeal and sexiness of the matchup this is probably as good as k-state could have done because I, they say that the previous year doesn't matter but like it seems like it kind of does when you look at some of the matchups really outside of uh butler playing uh houston it seems like the previous year kind of mattered a lot so Playing St. John's, Rick Pitino will be fun. If the game is at Madison Square Garden, it bumps up even more. So I'm excited to see kind of how that aspect shakes, shapes out because I think that that's more intriguing right now to me than what the actual game is going to look like at this point. Because to be honest, like I haven't really done a whole lot on St. John's. It's like I have no idea what, what they're doing. The only thing that I can really remember even about this year's St. John's team was uh, when Rick Pitino said that this was the least fun that he's ever had in his entire life. And then that sparked them going on a, a run and then ended up uh, playing in the NIT as well. So, I mean, if you look at it from just an attractiveness standpoint, it, it's a pretty fun game because you get probably get the garden, you get a Hall of Fame head coach. The only real negative that or downside that i can really think of right now would be if k-state football is where we think that they're going to be this makes the basketball game a lot less fun on the same day yeah that's that's the only thing that i immediately thought of when the schedule came out because we know that these games don't get all played on the same day like the big 12 sec did this is spread out throughout a week basically and so there are going to be two games on tuesday four games on wednesday two games on Friday, a game on Sunday, and two games on Saturday, December 7th. And K-State just happens to be one of them, which I immediately checked. And yes, that is the day of the Big 12 football championship game. So, I mean, look, it's not – I'm not saying K-State gets there, but they are the betting favorite right now to be in Arlington on December 7th. It's a little tough from that standpoint. Now, it doesn't probably impact a mass number of fans. I don't think a lot of people – would have been down for this, but there would have been some that definitely would have said, Hey, I want to go take the trip to New York. And also it's just, it's, it's a lot to throw into one day. I mean, we did the big 12 title game, uh, not this past season, but the season prior. And then that night K state was playing Wichita state Manhattan for the first time in 20 years. Like it's a lot to deal with in one day. Uh, so it's fortunate at least that this is going to be a road situation, but it does suck if you're a K state fan, because you may not be able to give this game, the attention that it fully deserves. Good news is, though, you talk about digging in and not knowing exactly uh, what St. John's is going to be. All you have to know is Doug McDaniel went off against St. John last year. 26 points, 8 of 16 from the floor, uh, dished out 7 assists and 6 rebounds in, this, in the process. So Doug McDaniel has had success before 
against the Johnnies, and uh, maybe he can replicate that this coming year. Uh, in terms of what to expect roster-wise from St. John's, um, they did sign one four-star player, Jaden Glover, uh, close to being a top 50 player in the country, and two other high school guys that probably won't be significant factors for him this upcoming year. Um, one of them, though, is a three-star center that stands over 7-1. Uh, and then they added some guys in the portal, but um, it, you know, it, guys that haven't necessarily lived up to much at this point. They get Aaron Scott from North Texas, and then Vincent Iwachuku, who plagued by injuries at USC, but maybe still a good player there. So that's kind of where things sit, but it's just silly to kind of talk about the actual game. It's more about the pomp and circumstance around it when we're sitting here on April 26th. Yeah, and like there are a lot worse teams that K State could play in this. I mean, it's yeah. not going, it's not going to DePaul. It's not playing Butler again. Yeah, here are the other here are all the other games going on in the Big 12 Big East battle this upcoming year. Baylor UConn is probably the marquee matchup. So Baylor will go up to they'll probably play that game in Hartford. Uh and then KU and Creighton is significant. Creighton had to go to Allen Fieldhouse during the COVID season. Yes. Um, so and that's one. Yeah. Uh and then Iowa State gets Marquette at home. I think like if you're Iowa State there wasn't a good option for you to host at home. You got the best that you could with Marquette there since Creighton and UConn were both due to host home games. Yeah, the, the team that really gets kind of screwed out of this, like I said, is probably Houston. Like, yeah, that, that game against Butler probably does nothing for them. Uh, I would say, honestly, Texas Tech is probably the worst. Yeah. DePaul at home. Like, it's a free win. So, uh, good for Grant McCaslin and everybody, but you're definitely sitting around like, man, I, I thought we would have been worthy of getting a better opponent to come and face us. But so that's probably the one that I, I think stings the most. The, the, th the fun part too, about St. John's is like, it's a new team. Like K-State's played Marquette already. They played mm -hmm. Butler already. They've already played Providence. Like the, the team that would really like probably be the most fun in this scenario would have been Creighton, but there was probably no chance of K-State getting Creighton after this past year. So I mean, like you look at it, like what what would be the other like realistic fun option that you would have rather had? Yeah, I like I, I don't know. I mean, because you have to match up like who would be maybe a return trip to Villanova would have been kind of interesting just because now Housen comes in and you played him in a close game last year. Yeah. But yeah, you and the other thing is like you talk about a new opponent, like look at all those on there that K-State has played in the last I guess maybe five years is, is too long now, but like five to six seasons, like you saw Creighton in the NCAA tournament. You played Marquette numerous times. You've played Villanova. You've played Providence. You've played Butler. Like you, it was going to be tough to find somebody that you hadn't seen. Um, and maybe Xavier would have been an interesting one, but obviously they weren't a candidate since they were a, a road team this year. So I really do think that you got the best possible option because K-State wasn't going to get to go to UConn or Creighton. Uh, they just weren't of that status now. Uh, and all those others, Seton Hall might may have been interesting, but St. John certainly has the most juice there. Uh, yeah. and, ba and Baylor and KU were deserving of the teams that they got on the road. So, yeah, I think this is the best you could hope for. Yeah, Seton Hall doesn't really do anything for me like St. John's does. So, I mean, it, it'll, it'll be a fun matchup, and I'm – I'm excited because Rick Pitino wears that white suit every so often. So I hope that this is a white suit Rick Pitino game because apparently the fans like love that everywhere he goes. It makes no sense to me. I guess he probably saves it for uh, like UConn or somebody next year. But yeah, if he wanted to bust it out for the game with Casey, I think that would be uh, more than fun. So look, this I think this is a a, a great opportunity for K State. This is going to be probably given the time of the year. Um, brushed under the rug a little bit because of how uh, everything will work out with conference football championships going on. But this is one of those games that it's a good matchup, just unfortunate the timing of it all. And uh, probably a good barometer for K-State. We'll see how the rest of the schedule kind of continues to get built up. We're starting to be able to put the pieces together a little bit more. But this is going to be one of those non-con road tests that Jerome Tang has been pretty adamant about his team playing. And since he's come to K-State, this is going to be easily the toughest road non-con opponent that he's faced because the other ones have been Cal, a not very good Butler team that they lost to 
uh, and then LSU this past year who struggled. So uh, this, I think this is a, an, a great option for them. I'd even add that you could argue that this is probably going to be their toughest non-conference game at, at the moment. Like, I just don't see with the Big 12 expanding to 20 games in conference play, K-State playing many power opponents. And I also am of the opinion that they probably shouldn't schedule yeah. many power opponents in the non-conference. So we know that LSU is coming back to Manhattan as well. And, and I just think that going on the road to St. John's is probably tougher than hosting LSU because LSU has been dog crap the yeah. last three, four years now. So I just think that this is probably going to be the toughest non-conference game, which is the part that also sucks about this falling on championship Saturday for football. Uh, this is probably going to be the only time that you really see K-State in a major test, and at least against a power opponent in non-conference and basketball. Yep, no doubt about it. All right, well, if you want more on K-State basketball because the transfer portal continues to give to the Wildcats, and some more guys departing. Head over to kstateonline.com. Get the lowdown on that. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching the KSO Show.